So first step in installing your core livers is crack all your wheel nuts. So you want to make sure they're uh, they're loose before you jack it up because it's a uh, little we'll how to do that when it's in the air. All right, we'll tackle the fronts first. So you to get to out the it. fronts. Yeah, you have to do a tiny quarter turn. The 10 mil. 10 mil, and you feel it go, release, and then there's a couple more. One. There we go, and then there's a little thing you pinch here. You can lift up that panel. There we go. This can just be, that's just kind of held on with a little push pin so we'll pull those off pins down there a little plastic rivet there so we just got to pull that out Get your fingernail under there and that is off now it can just go flip that over so we can access the tops you see we've already got camber plates on here you can see a video of us installing those millway camber tops but uh yeah they're coming off now so we'll start unbolting things um, on the strut top well, because we've got the uh, the camera plates. These are all uh, just a hex socket, but that's a big E14, um, E18, sorry. And then we'll undo that. So we're going to take this shock out in one whole unit. We're not going to separate the camera camber plate from it, um, so we can you know put it back in if need be later. So we'll take this off and then pull these off, and that'll be what. But I'm going to leave the uh, I'll leave a couple threaded in. You'll see just so it doesn't drop out when we jack the car up. So I've got all the all the torque specs I'll be putting up on the screen as we go. Uh, that's barely torqued on and and uh, and just pulls off like that. Put it aside and then we'll take these up. I said we'll loosen all but we'll remove all but two and we'll have those just loose. So it'll just kind of hang there when we uh, lift it up. All right, wheels are off, car is supported. Now we need to pop off the leveling arm, which is right there. Yep, and you just should be able to do that with a little flathead screw. There you go, that is popped. Now that that's done, we need to get some uh, Torx tools and we will undo the sway bar end links right there. That will give us lots of room. Plus, we've got replacement sway bar end links with this kit. So, perfect opportunity. So, we got the, now that that little arm's off, and there's only one on one side. It's not on the other. Now, we're going to take these off. So, the hold bolt, that's a Torx T30. So, you can put a driver on that and hold that with a wrench or vice versa, whatever way you do it. Uh, we'll see what's going to work best for us. Okay, now I've got a pass through socket so that's a 16 mil or if you're doing the old school because my set had you know mixed size uh 16 mil is a 5 8 so i gotta pass through on there that'll be my hold and then i've got the t30 now if you don't have the, a pass through uh was well, pretty handy to have if you're doing the spring tops but if you don't have it what you're going to be doing you'll be putting a wrench on here and then just wrenching it off with a 16 mil but we're going to do there we go, so we're using the ratchet and holding with the pass-through. Keep in mind, the heat shield for the rotor is pretty sharp, so if you want to keep your knuckles, uh, just be mindful of that. And this kit comes with sway bar end links, so we'll be taking the whole thing off, so we'll be taking off the bottom one as well. But if you're just, you know, taking this out to replace springs or whatever, or if your kit doesn't come with end links, then you'll be, uh, just removing the top one. Okay, that's off of there. Okay, now it's not gonna come out straight away because there's gonna be tension on it. We're gonna get the little jack and jack up underneath the whole hub assembly and uh, it'll put it in line and we'll be able to take it out nice and easy then. I've got a lift block, just a rubber pad on top so they don't damage anything. It doesn't, don't have to, but it's kind of handy to use. And we'll drop it down. And try to get it in behind here and onto the hub. We just put it onto here. We're just taking the load off it. There we go. Raise it up a little bit. 
we just don't want everything to drop out because it's basically being held in now um, by the uh, by the bolts on the top. So let's see, keep going up. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to get that arm out, sway bar link. So there will be a point where the sway bar link kind of is neutral. And, There it is. So there's a point where the sway bar angling, you can wiggle it and just pull it out. This doesn't have tension on it. So uh, technically we just take this shock. We should be able to take this out in a second. We just got to undo one, that pinch bolt there. And I don't have a spreader, but we, there's a couple of tricks we can do to try to open it. But in the meantime, before I take it all off, I'm going to take off the lower sway bar end link, which is here. And again, that's your T30 and your 16. So we'll just quickly, quickly take that off so we'll just try to break it there we go and then we'll get the the t30 on there to hold it not a lot of room in uh for this one i don't even know if i can get it in there all these plastic bits i'll have to use a smaller ratchet and then i can use the uh don't need the little adapters Okay, this one's going to be slow going. So I've got a crescent wrench to hold this T30. There we go. And then I've got, I don't have a ratcheting wrench this size. It's a wrench. But there we go. Okay, that was a bit tedious, but I got that sway bar end link out. Uh, so we are sway bar end link list. Now, this whole thing will drop down. Uh, but first, I want to undo the... There's a pinch nut there and a bolt basically on the other side. Um, no, sorry, that's the bolt, nuts on the other side. 16s on both sides. And we need to take that out. And uh, you might, if you're rusty, you might want to be spraying some penetrating oil down here. Um, I'm not even, you know, this thing's got 15,000 kilometers. I'm still going to put some on there just to uh, make my life a bit easier now. So we've got the old can of WD. Okay, this is the bolt we're doing. So just pop that out. It's just sitting there, so I'll pop that out. So we got a little bit of room. Actually, might pop that one too. So it's just because we're gonna pull this whole shock out, and we don't need that to come with it on the bracket. So come yeah, on, there we go. Our eyes are out. Okay, now we got the breaker bar. I got the dog bone on the other side to hold it. Sorry about the wood wobblies. I'm just gonna break it. There we go. A couple more turns of this, and then we can get in there with our ratchet driver. But with this, it goes a bit quicker. Okay, now we can get that bracket out of the way. You'll notice it's got a little forky bit that goes into the back end. Now we're going to see if this is going to be open enough or if we have to get something in there to pry it. But the, uh, we could probably put a, uh, we should be able to put a socket in there and pry it. But let's just drop. We're going to take the bolts out of the top. Here we go. We're gonna to try to drop it down and see uh, if we have enough room to get it out now. There it goes. Top is all clear. Here she's hanging down. Down low. Now none of these are, whole, are tight, so that's good. And we are not on the jack, so how are we gonna get this lower? So that's dropped down now. I don't, that's not enough room to clear. So we're gonna have to see about what else we can do to loosen this up to get it out. Cause it's still, none of it, nothing is hanging, holding it up. And the jack is out. We just need a little bit more room to, to get it out. So what's it resting on? 
I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay, so it's resting on the, looks like it's resting on the sway bar. You can see our the Porsche GT3 brake ducts. You can see our video on that. Uh -huh. um, so I think we're still resting on the sway bar, which we are. So we're gonna have to do the other side and come back to this side. Okay, so I don't have the special tool to spread the hub, the thing on the back there, the carrier. So what I do, I've got a hex socket. Uh, I think a five, a five, six, or seven will do. This is a seven. And I did this on my Audi before. And you get that in there and you twist that. Get it in the gap. Okay, you gotta get right in the gap there. So yeah. And we're gonna turn it and hopefully that's gonna open it up enough. So after that seven actually, not doing eight. So now we can move it, so that should be good. So we're now we're gonna push down a little bit more and I'll try to swing it out, put a cloth on top. I really don't wanna scratch anything. Ah, this thing's so heavy, kind of jams in funny. If you have lowering springs, it's not gonna be an issue, but these are the stock springs. And we're gonna clear. Compress. I'm gonna try, oh, there we go. There we go. That is the shock out. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. And I'm gonna twist and pull. There it comes. Okay, here we go. There we go, we're out. Now, be careful we're not hanging by these. There's no tension in those, that's good. Okay, there we go. So the guys have told me that we want to have the springs on the front just captive. So just captive means they're not rattling around. Uh, so like if we back that off, now they're, now they're loose. So we'll just go until they stop being loose. So still a bit loose, still, there we go. There we go, they're secure. So let's I'm gonna lock these off at this point here. wrenches that come with it they're, they're pretty good they're better than the ones I've had before one is thick one is thin so we got a bottom one uh, and a top one and we'll lock those off in here so cranking the bottom one while keeping the top one still Spring is just captive. Now, they suggest 40 mil of drop on the front. So that's uh, if the car is at ride height and you lift it up, it'll drop 40 mil. So that's what we'll be setting this height at. We'll get, I guess we'll be setting that um, in the car after we give it a go, because uh, I'm not sure what it's, it's gonna come into at, right out of the box. So let's just uh, we'll keep these loose. So we can move things around. There we go. And that's this is our left, and we're going to do the same to the other one and then uh, install one. Okay, that's our shock. This one is our right hand. We're going to do this one first. Um, so we've got our strut mounts we went to put in the other day, and it looked like we had the older BMW that only had the three bolt. This is the five with the stud for the strut brace. So uh, the instructions from the guys at Shockworks were to have just touching preload. So that's what we've done here. So that's just basically so it's not rattling around and ballpark length. We're going to go for the, we're set kind of on the, the length of the strut here. So we will definitely be adjusting that shortly. Look at that. I'm going to lock it half, halfway so it's open. Now let's try. There we go. That's what it needed. That's sitting all the way down. That is sitting all the way down and even. If you feel around the bottom, it sits on the taper. So now I need to get this out. That's it. 
and we can rotate it all back in nice and easy. Now, if we want to make it shorter to make life easier for ourselves, we can do that and just wind it, wind it down so the whole thing's a bit shorter. And we'll take the jack out. Okay, ready? I need to pull the jack out, please. Oh. Okay, oh, let's go shorter. There we go, we are through. And that's where it's gotta go. It's gotta go up from there. So that's nice and easy. What we'll do to lift it all up, I'm just gonna push up on the bottom. I should be able to do this, I've done it before. Now put the jack under here. Ready to go. And we'll... There we go. We're in. Okay. Quickly put a nuts and washers on all those. There we go, we are not bolted in, but at least we are now secure. Okay, just to get that out through there, I dropped it down again and just wiggled it and realigned it because with the pressure on it, it wouldn't pop through the hole. So easy enough, got that done. So we are now in position. You can see how much room we have, camber adjustment here, that's awesome. So we can really crank it over. It's off-centered as it is, you can see that there. The hole is off center, not in the middle, and that's even more so, so we can really get some more camber out of this. We weren't needing too much more, but another half degree or maybe even full degree. Want to be about negative three to three and a half. So in the two other holes, we're just using the stock bolts into there. And now that this is We'll snug this up, but we're not going to torque them down yet. We'll torque them, torque them in a little bit. Uh, I'll put all the torque specs on the screen when we get to get to it. Just to hold. Six, so we torque the these bolts down to uh, 24 newton meters. So. We'll do a bit of a star pattern, I suppose. Let's see where. Okay, it is putting the pinch bolt time back in time. Now, that, it goes back in from the front and we gotta get that little bracket in place. Um, ooh, where's the nut on this go? The nut goes on the bolt head, okay, that's easy. So we're gonna get the bracket in place. I've got a couple pumps on the jack just to get tension out of the way. Okay, now that goes back in. Nice and easy. Pinch bolt in. Not on the other side. And just to remind you, that was a 16 mil. Now, I'm gonna put the torque specs on this bolt. Um, this could be one of those bolts that BMW says is a one-time stretch bolt. Uh, I think it might be, but I'll, anyway, I'll put the torque specs on. I'm just reusing them. Okay, torquing down the pinch bolt. It's 56 newton meters, and it's tough to get in here. Right, come on, there we go. And I do have a little adapter on this because this is my shorter torque wrench. There we go, 56 newton meters, clickety click. While we're here, I'm just gonna push in all the little sensor things. There's a couple mounting spots for these little guys. There's 
one down there. If they're not going in, a little bit of WD-40 or similar will make it a lot easier, but uh, you just gotta push them through. Okay, that side, now I have no idea what height we're gonna go with this, so we're gonna be doing a few drops to test fit. Um, and if, unless you have a low profile jack, you wanna put your ramps underneath it as well. So I'll talk about that more in a minute because we're now pretty low. So there are the sway bar mounting points to attach our new adjustable end links that they gave us with the kit. And we'll get looking at those now. All right, this is how we're gonna lengthen these just to get them a bit longer to install. So I've cracked the nuts, it's all loose. And we're just gonna start keeping these here. We're gonna start unwinding because you've got One's a right hand, one's a left hand thread. And we're just gonna make this a bit longer and then loosely add these nuts here just to keep it even while we're, uh, where is that? That's there. 16, no, this is 17. Just so we can kind of ballpark the length. So there you go, that's how you adjust that. But again, we're way shorter than the stock ones because it's a lower mounting point. So we're kind of, we have nothing really to go off. Okay, so what we've done, we've kind of preloaded it. So we've jacked it up a little bit to, uh, to try to get the right height. So we're going to test the length now. Now, these are one way and the other way. So that's not far off. I think if we, Tom, if you can jack it up a little bit more. Yeah. So we want it so that, yeah, the suspension's loaded. Keep going. Loaded it. When the car starts lifting. Okay, so. Oh. Okay, so we're pretty close there. I'm gonna put a nut on the top just to hold it. Okay, so I've got the nut on the top, and now I'm going to turn, while holding the bottom, turn the end link to shorten it up a bit, because we made it a little bit too long. And then it should line up into the hole. Actually, I think we probably need to go a little bit higher in the jack, because the car isn't really lifting yet. Okay, so we jacked it up a little bit more. Again, we're still just kind of preloading things. We're going to really do this with the tires on the ground on, uh, on some ramps so we can get under here and adjust. But we will, in the meantime, we will get these tightened up. And we just want them so they're snug. Now we're gonna get our ratchet onto here and a wrench on here to hold it. That holding, you need a really thin wrench to do it. It's gonna be tricky because it's a, the holding nut, jam nut is pretty small. We'll go on it until we need it. We might not because these are new and they're super rigid. Okay, so we need to tighten this There, that went up, but we'll still get the torque specs on in a minute when we get it all lined up to where it needs to be. So, torquing the sway bar end link to the same 56 newton meters. There we go, and we'll do the same to the bottom. Okay, with this bottom one, got our ratchet and wrench. Which way is that way? That's going. Okay, that is on there solid. So we're gonna loosen these off a little bit and just push it over so we get some more camber in it because we were pretty far. We were negative two or two and a half uh, with the previous alignment. So we're gonna push this over a bit just to uh, get it similar so we can uh, at least drive it to get the alignment done. Almost done. That bolt there on there, 28 newton meters, which is not a lot. That's what we did with a hand wrench anyway. Two more to do, and that's these two here. Uh, now the guys have said that the official torque spec on those is 16 newton meters, uh, but kind of just go by hand till it's snug, but we'll just go to 16 anyway, just to see what that's like. So said so I pushed that all the way over max camber. Uh, 16 newton meters is very little. Don't even know, here we go in here. 
and we're just going to do a crisscross on it. Uh -uh. Warm that all up. There we go. That one. And that's just a five mil Allen key. There we go. That is a Shockworks core lever installed on a BMW M2. It'd be the same for an M3, uh, M4, so any of the F chassis, it'd be the same, and probably not too dissimilar from a G chassis as well. How's that height looking? It's looking pretty high. Yep. So we gotta drop that down quite a bit. Okay, we've had them on, the wheels on, we dropped it down. Uh, the specs for these coil levers call for a 40 mil droop. So put it on the ground and you jack it up and it'll be 40 mils before the wheels come off, the tires come off the ground. So that's basically your wheel travel. Um, so we're currently at 55 and, and we're gonna adjust them. So we've got, so they've got the spring set with the, a bit of preload in them, just like is required. And now, let's come have a look at this. We're going to adjust. All right, so this is set. So the spring is set at the height there. If you want to just double check the measurement because I measured off the other side. It should be about the same. It should be, yeah, it's within a few millimeters of the same. But we need to adjust this. So we need to loosen this ring off. There's only finger tight. And we'll just get it so it's snug. Take a measurement of the distance here. So we're at just a touch under 40 millimeters. And we're going to want to bring that up about 10. And then we'll measure again. So we just we'll use this ring as a guide to how many turns we're going to have to do on it. And there we have 30. So a centimeter here will be more out here um, just because of the, uh, the lever. So actually we'll go a little bit less because I think the other side we did about 27. So there we go. So we need to now get our big fat hook and turn screwing the shock body into the hub mount until they touch. Now that we're about to touch and the ring will kind of, there we go, it's touching. So that will be our desired range now and we're going to Double check the measurement, but that should be spot on. There we go, just under 30 millimeters. Uh, now we're going to just get that finger tight, put the wheels on, because we've already done it to the other side, and we'll uh, check the height now and the drop. Okay, now I'm gonna adjust the sway bar end link. So you can see it there in my hand. Top nut, bottom nut are loose, and we're just gonna wind it until there's this point so it's, getting, it's really tight that way, and it's loose, and then it's really tight that way. So there's a sweet spot of kind of just nothing, where there's no tension on it. That's our sweet spot, that's adjusted. So there's no preload on the sway bar. So yeah, I've had to do it vertical, because it's the only way I get the phone in there to film. But uh, that's it. So I'm gonna lightly wind down the nuts, the captive nuts to hold it there. Double check the other side. So there's, make sure there's no preload there. Come back, check this again, and uh, and that should be job done. And what you see here, that's a GT3 brake duct from a Porsche on here. And uh, they're about $9 each, so that's cheap brake cooling. So I got another video on that. I'll put the link in the description. Highly recommend that for, you know, 20 bucks to get some cool air on the brakes. That's a win. So anyway, we'll uh, check the other side, but that's how you adjust the sway bar end links. Now we're starting the rears. Do the rears. We 
say that we got three oh, e no. twelve sockets, right? Yep. So we'll take those out. Okay, we're under the back of the car. So the exhaust is here. Now the shock is coming down here. We need to. We got an eighteen on both ends here. So we got one on that end, and the so that's the nut. We need to loosen that. These are torqued on pretty tight. So we're going to use the breaker bar. I think we're going to swing it the other direction. Here, look out, bud. We're going to go this way, okay? We're going to go this way. Put your head up, and we're going to go. Loosen it by lifting up. No. This is in. This is really in. We'll put the torque specs for assembling this on when we're done. Right now it's pretty uh it's pretty on there. But we're getting it. If we had to impact it a little quicker, but that's okay. Brute strength. Just feeling on the other side till it starts it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so it's all loose now. Just put the power ratchet on there. There we go. And that bolt. There we go. That slides right out. So if you were, yeah. We're replacing these shocks, so that's got to come out. Pull it out. Okay. Bolt out. Now, remember the, the way it went, the orientation. So the bolt went back with the nut on the nut on the end facing backwards. Okay, we're just going to get the shock out of here now. So we can just get some tension on here. And down she comes. His little gasket. Um, we don't need to reuse the strut tops on this, so on our new set, some do. Okay, bolts out of the bottom. And that should just lift up and out. And that is the shock removed. Okay, you got this little bit of, what is this? It's like paper, yeah, it's paper. gasket. But uh, I guess it keeps it rubbing through to the paint. So we'll pop that plastic off and reuse this on the, uh, on the shock for the new uh, new coilovers and just looking at this looks like yeah such low kilometers in this car and it still looks like that bump stops just had a little bit of dry yes. rot which is odd all right cool well they'll go in the box of spares now we got 21 mil socket and on the breaker bar and wrench and this is the camera bolt so this we're just going to loosen before we uh before we get the jack under here and support this lower arm, which is, I don't know, coffin arm in Porsche talk. I don't know what BMW guys call it. It shouldn't be too tight, but it's definitely not loose. Definitely not loose. And of course, it's the weird eccentric bolt because it is for uh, adjusting the camber. Hmm, need a 21 ratchet and wrench. Now, like I said, this is held in by, well, the spring is pushing down, the bolt is holding the spring in, so we gotta get the our small little jack under here to support it, and then we can pull this out and then slowly release it and release the spring. Okay, we'll keep going up. That should be enough. And now we're going to try to get the bolt out. Maybe go a little bit more. A bit more.
That's get, uh, I can move it by hand now. A little bit more, loose enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little bit more, dude. There we go. All right, we just had it a little bit too high for its own good. Now that camber bolt is out. Now, if we keep dropping that jack down, that arm should uh, slide right down slowly, and the spring should just drop out. Mm -hmm. Yep, we, yep, lower it down. Good. Okay, that is free and loose. We can take the jack out of there now. Swings away. Boop. Spring out. We're just building up the spring, so this is what you've got. So there's the factory one. Uh, we reuse the bottom rubber thing with the little spigot that's going to sit in the hole in the arm and we put the adjusters on top. Uh, there's a plastic nylon washer that goes in between, and then we're gonna pry out a little cup that's still in the chassis. So that is how that's gonna sit, and we'll get that cup out of there. So this is the cup we're gonna remove. Should be able to get it out with just some wiggling and banging with some screwdrivers. Might take a bit of, might get a hammer and knock the screwdriver in to, to get it out. Uh, yeah, because it's been pressed in with the weight of the car, so let's get a hammer on it and bang it out. All right, that just smacked me in the head. That just sits up like that, I think. That's supposed to sit that so that sits in there nice and flush. Actually, is that gonna sit? Where does that nylon go? No, nope, that nylon does not go there. That is a spring spacer. All right, so that's gonna sit in there. Got it wound all the way down. Well, pretty far down. Still want to be able to access it, which we can get the wrenches in there. Get it low, make it easier to put the spring in. Okay, and then the spring is gonna come up. That'll all sit flush. We'll look back. Let's try to get this arm up and get it aligned. So that little peg goes into a hole on the, uh, on the arm, we saw that before. Now, it's gonna be a weird game of alignment here. I think we might just do the, get the spring in the bottom. How's it gonna go on the top? It's gonna to twist in, okay. Okay, now we just gotta get things aligned. So, you see you got the little rubber thing sticking out there. Got the arm up. It's gonna take a bit of finagling. It's kind of on my chest, so. Be lifting and twisting. We might have to get a screwdriver in the hole and try to align it so I get that bolt back in there. There it goes. Okay. That's in. Get the eccentric washer. That way, didn't it? Yep. There's only one way that goes in. There we go. Washer only goes on one way. There is that way. There is that way there. The correct nut is the uh, flange pin. There we go. That's easier. Okay, bolt is in, it's all in the grooves. Okay, now we gotta get that spring located a bit better than that. I'm making that a bit taller. 
so it goes into the hole and it holds itself in there. Well, I have no idea what that's going to be like in length when we're done, but I'll, uh, I'll quickly measure it so I can duplicate it on the other side. But I still have the little tab sticking out here. So as long as it started there, it should guide itself in. I'm just going to measure the distance here in the threaded area from the top to bottom. So it's not tight, but it's, it's you're not going to fall out on me. Now, we got a shock body. These are awesome. They come with their new tops. You don't have to reuse them. And that's going to be our damper adjustment. So what I'm going to do lengthwise, uh, I'm going to do it fairly, that's as short as it goes. Uh, we'll do one or two turns out. Just get that kind of in position. We're not going to be going any shorter. And we'll be reusing that gasket. Uh, I don't know if I have to, but I'm going to because why not? I've got it there. So we'll just use the old bolts and just get everything kind of lined up before we crank it down to spec. All right, let's get it in. So we're gonna put it in position. Get our bolt going. Put it down. That's it there. Okay, bolt is in, you can let go. Uh, we are dealing with spherical bearings, so we bushings, we can tighten this up now and not have to worry about it binding. So I think we just might, uh, well, at least snug it up a bit more. We'll get the 18 mil sockets going. Here, I'll tell you what, you hold that on the back, on the bolt. I'll hold this on. Ready? There's 20, here, this one. Yeah, this one. Hey, ready? Okay, there we go. That's snug. We'll torque it down in a minute. There's how much shorter it is. It's not reaching the top. So what we'll do, we'll get the jack under here, raise it up, keep an eye on the spring so that seat gets seated properly, and then we'll put the bolts in. Yep, jack it up. Go. Oh. Okay, we're checking the spring. That's in the right spot. This is not binding in any wrong spot. Okay. All right, that's almost there. That should be enough to get a bolt in. All right. Can we go up a bit in the jack, please? Up. Up. Yeah, that's the problem. We're not high enough to get in the hole. Okay. No, that's it. That's good. Okay, got one in there. The first one was a pain, but got it now. And all the others should just line up pretty easy. Go up a bit higher. Yep, that's good. That's good. Okay. Okay, that's the shock in position, the spring's in position, that's captive, that's definitely being held now. Uh, we're gonna get the torque settings and we're gonna crank all these down. Now the specs call for five mil of preload on the spring uh, and 50 mil of droop on the coil, on the shock, so on the system itself. So what I've done, I've got this spring really loose because we'll be adjusting that shortly. I'm gonna make it a bit shorter. And I got the jack underneath here. My tape kind of jammed up here. So I'm going to be jacking this hub up until it kind of starts lifting the car. And that'll give me a pretty good indication of where we need to be with that shock length. That way we can adjust the spring to get the preload. So the specs from Shockworks for the rear says we want 50 mil of droop. So right now we're at full hang uh, and we want five mil of preload in the spring. So the spring was just, just a bit, just on loose there. We can loosen it off a bit more. It's basically just held. We'll adjust that. You can hear it rattling. It's not tight yet, so we'll adjust that in a second. 
So what we're gonna do, we're gonna jack this up till the car starts to move. Uh, right now, arbitrary point, we're gonna do that at, let's call that 52. So five centimeters less than that will be uh, 47. So we're gonna start lifting it up and hopefully at 47, it starts to get lifted off the jack stand or about to. All right, up we go. Okay, what are we at? 48. Keep going. It's not lifting yet. All right, so we're past our point and it's still not lifted. So we're, uh, keep going. All right, that's our point there. So we just lifted off the jack stand uh, and that is 45 and a half, uh, so we want to be at uh, 47, so we need to adjust the shock length a bit. So we'll drop it down, and uh, we'll drop it down, and we're about one and a half centimeters off, so I think if we just move the shock maybe by one centimeter, because obviously it's further in, so it changes, I'm not right going to, yep, right off, I'm not going to do the the geometry to work that calculation, but uh, I will try a centimeter up and that should give us a pretty close indication. So we'll get the calipers and we'll measure off here. And we'll wind up a centimeter. Are we still okay the yep, yep, it didn't move. Okay, so where are we at here? That is, how about that? That's 13 mil, so I'll get it to snug up on just below the ring. Wind it in. How are we doing on the spring tension? Maybe we'll back loosen that off a bit too. Okay, spring is as, almost, as short as it can go. It's loose. I've taken another just over 10 millimeters out of there. We are currently sitting at 55, and we'll start going up. 50, well, 0.5, it should be. Uh, and we're gonna be going 50 cent, uh, five centimeters shorter, so we should be going to uh, the 45 and a half, so up we go. All right, stop. Uh, there we go, it just started to lift up and then we was at 44, so we're getting closer. Okay, drop it down. Okay, let's check it again. We're at pretty exactly 50, and we wanna to go to 45. Okay, 40, 45 till we got the chassis moving. That's it, right there at 45. And it just starts to move where I can move the top of the tape. Okay, there we go, let it, now let it go. And that should drop back down to 50. Yep, right back down to 50, perfect, okay. Now uh, our spring is pretty short here. It's basically as short as it goes. Um, Don't know, yeah, probably put a little bit more preload in that, but that's 50 on the back. Okay, so I've got that five millimeters of preload in the rear spring. Uh, I've locked off the bottom nut. The top of that locking ring, you see where I'm measuring there, to the bottom, oops, just slipped off, of the mount, the shock mount on this shock work is that's 31 and a half centimeters so I'm going to replicate that on the other side now 
and uh, you can use that for a reference for your starting point on your car. Now to start torquing things down. So the shock mount, 100 newton meters. Get up on the other side to hold it. 100 newton meters, I think it's about 74, five pounds foot. But uh, European car, use newton meters. Okay. So I've jacked the car up a little bit just to put some tension in it. So all the bearings and bushings are going to be kind of aligned. Some lot of them are spherical, but just to make sure. There we go. That's 100. Now we're going to get that camber bolt is in there. The uh, washers are in the right spot. I have no idea what the camber is and what it's going to be. So I might actually just turn it around here and see if we can get any what kind of adjustment is gonna happen, what's gonna to happen to it. So we'll loosen it off before we torque it down because it definitely doesn't look like it's got a lot of camber right now, but we still need to definitely, it's just gotta be aligned. Otherwise it's horrible. Okay, now we're gonna tighten the camber bolt. Now that is 165 newton meters or 122 pounds foot. Uh, oh, can I even get in there at that angle? This is gonna be even, this is going to be a pain. So trying to hold it in position. I basically just set it for maximum camber right now. So we got to go get this aligned because that's going to throw the, the toe is going to be so far off. And we flipped it around because you want to be tightening the nut, of course, not the, uh, you don't want to be tightening the, uh, the bolt when you do, when you do uh, crank stuff down like this. But I think I need a short, just a regular ratchet and get most of this tension out of this thing. Switch to the torque wrench. This is where being on a hoist would be a lot easier because you'd be wouldn't be backhanded like I am right now. I'll try to hang off it. And, oh. That's all I can pull. Hold on. That's all I can do. I can't get it any other angle. So, well, that's where it's going to be. That's tighter than the alignment guys I've ever had it anyway. So, we'll leave it at that. So, yeah, that's 165 newton meters or 122 pounds foot. Uh, good luck trying to do it backhanded like I am right now. Other side would be easy. That'll be uh, won't be so backhanded. Uh, gonna do these e torques now, so they are just 28 newton meters, 21 pound foot if need be that way. Uh, I probably already surpassed that with my electric ratchet, but let's see here. Yep, yeah, already done, gone past. When we undid them, they weren't very, they're not particularly torqued in. Come on. Yeah, they're already in, so they're, uh, they're done. So that's, um, yeah, that's the back corner done. So the other corner, same deal, just uh, backhanded. So we're going to get the measurements off of this again and apply it to our parts and just get them in the other side. It should take probably half as long. Coilovers are in. So uh, the back is a lot lower. Definitely not. Well, the, you know, the wheel's tucked in. It's actually pretty well straight. Um, but we'll go get it corner balanced and aligned properly. Uh, so the back, uh, I timed myself doing the other side uh, without filming in that. So the back took me just under 30 minutes. So about 28 minutes it took on the time. And the front, after, uh, after getting one done, 
The front took me about 45 minutes. There's just a few more little bolts to deal with there. The front is, uh, the front's pretty low as well. So I do have the uh, CMP roll center kit in this. So that, that actually made a difference even stock uh, felt better. And now it's, uh, now it's doing its thing, keeping the uh, geometry in check. So we'll have a look back and we'll see what happens when we corner weight it. But um, yeah, that's looking, looking pretty. It's looking pretty real pretty oh we have these to go on Ooh, yes some uh custom wheels done so yeah the alignment's gonna be all over the shop camber who knows what it's gonna be you can see the front is mega that's pushed all the way in okay now we're gonna clean up and uh we'll go get it aligned just picking up the m2 after a favorite place to go for a corner balancing and alignments that looks better the wheels look straight now you can definitely see with the eye that they were towed all over the shop so much better time for the uh drive home so suspension comparison before and after this is a spot in my area little overpass over some water really good you can feel the dampening compression that you can wait to chest it from quite a few of my cars so we're going to go up and over here and uh let's see Yeah, that just there's no jiggling it just absorbs that bump and that bit of a drop that's what we want compression wise now the big test for the new coilovers is going to be uh on the track so we've got a track day coming up uh, and i will post my thoughts and reviews of the sharpworks coilovers probably on the drive home from the track because it's about an hour and a half drive so i'll get back to you then track day since installing the coilovers and uh, running the Nankang CRS tires instead of the AR1s and wow is uh, pretty good it was uh, I'll put the times on the screen but I dropped all my times for the two track variations we ran uh, they all uh, yeah they all fell by quite a bit like uh, three and what, four seconds I think it was anyway look I'll put the times on the screen anyway so Coilovers feel good. I uh, tried a bit with the dampening settings. I added a, you know, I stiffened them up um, compared to what they recommended. Didn't really notice any difference, to be honest. There's a big dip in the major turn after the main straight on this track. Uh, unsettles pretty much every car. Wasn't too bad on this. Um, it sounded like I had some rubbing, but I'm. I had a look, and what it is, it's my mud flaps because I made mud flaps for this car in the front and they're pretty long to keep uh, any stones from coming up anyway so they were they were touching so not too bad just under compression there those were rubbing but that's it no other clearance issues whatsoever uh, the CRS tires yes they are very grippy um, I'd like to you know back to back them with the air ones but I think they're a bit better these are the new compound uh, which is Notably, there's tons of test results from magazines and stuff. They're notably uh, a faster tire. So, yeah, the coilovers are good. Dampening settings were nice. Uh, I think we went well with the spring rates. Um, I'll put the spring rates on the screen here now in a second. We did go stiffer, quite a bit stiffer in the back end because I'm not running aftermarket sway bars. Had I been running aftermarket sway bars, might have had a little bit less there to uh, even it up. But I prefer to have cars set up with kind of stiffer springs rather than try to compensate with the uh, stiffening of the sway bars. So, yep, Sharpworks did a good job, so I went through with them, told them what I was doing, what what specs I run, what tires, what kind of alignment. I think uh, alignment's another thing. I'll put the alignment specs up on the screen now as well, and you can check that out. Um, 
I tow, it's slightly towed in, it felt stable, didn't have that kind of really bitey turn in, but uh, felt really good. Could probably go with a little bit more negative camber, about another half degree up front, just because there's, especially on my front left, which is the tire that gets hammered uh, on the shoulder, it was coming down a little bit, the wear is coming a little bit further than I thought I'd go, but I really, uh, yeah, half a degree on the front will be good. Back felt great, and yeah, that's, uh, that's it, the yeah, the Shockworks guys did good on the coilovers, CRS tires felt great, and uh, all up, it was good setup, good handling. I did have the car corner balanced, the guys here at Action Tires and more, uh, they run cup cars themselves, uh, very experienced drivers, and they set up the car corner balance. It looks like it's nose up, uh, but I think it's just because it's a 35 series tire in the back, but uh, it's really, yeah, felt really good. Touch understeer in some spots, but uh, it's, I can kind of tap the brakes, settle the car, bring the nose back down. I might play with that a little bit and just drop the front by like five mil. That'll give me a little bit more, a little bit more weight on the front tires. But I don't know. I could go do another track day right now, and it's set up perfectly. So I uh, don't really want to mess with it too much.